Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. We have root 3 over 2 plus 1 over 2i to the power x equals 1 over 2 plus root 3 over 2i. So we kind of have a complex number and then we raise it to a power x and then it kind of switches the real and imaginary parts. So what type of x is able to do that? That's what we're going to explore. And it's going to be pretty interesting. So let's get started. To be able to solve this problem, obviously, you can't use binomial theorem, you know, because we don't even know x is, and x is not necessarily an integer, right? If we knew x, like x is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, that's what we're trying to find, we could expand it, but we don't even know what it is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write each of these numbers in polar form using Euler's number and then go from there. And that's going to be super duper helpful. Let's get started. So to be able to write a number in polar form, first of all, we have to find two things. One of them is R, the other one is theta. R is the modulus, or you could also use it absolute value. So how do you find that? How do you find that? Uh, you take the real part and the imaginary part, you add their squares, and you square root it. So in other words, this is the distance from zero. When you graph a complex number, like this is real, this is the imaginary axis, let's say this is our number, the distance from zero is going to give you r. It's also called the absolute value. Make sense? And the theta is just the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. And that can be found by dividing the y by x, because that's going to give you tangent theta. Make sense? In other words, theta can be uh, written as tan inverse of y over x, where x is the x-coordinate or the real part and y is the imaginary part. Okay, let's go ahead and do it for each of these numbers. First one, the one on the left. r is actually the square root of 3 over 4 plus 1 over 4. That's going to give you 1. Now, if you recognize uh, sines and cosines of angles, you're going to realize that uh, these are special angles, right? <laughs> That's going to be helpful. And the uh, tangent theta, in this case, is going to be 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. The root 2 is going to cancel out. I mean the 1, sorry, the 2 at the bottom is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 1 over root 3. And that is actually the reciprocal of root 3, by the way. So that's going to give you 30 degrees, or we can write it as pi over 6. And again, we're looking for the number that satisfies both the sine and cosine. And notice that both cosine and sine are positive, so we're in the first quadrant. So pi over 6 fits that criteria. Make sense? So we got our first number. Let's go ahead and write it now. Root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i can now be written as... Now, in general, if you know these two, you can write it as r times e to the power i theta. I'll get to the... Uh, principal branch and other stuff later, but this can be written as, since r is 1, we can basically write it as e to the power i times pi over 6. But of course, you're allowed to add, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, so let's go ahead and add 2 pi, multiples of 2 pi to this, and that's going to be the general solution. If you just take n equals 0, that is going to be considered the principal branch, okay? because it's going to be a multi-valued function. So, we were able to write our first number on the left in polar form. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second one. 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. Now, what happens when the x and y kind of switch places? You're going to get a tangent of root 3, and r is going to be 1 again, because we're dealing with the same numbers. And this time, it's going to be 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. So this number can be written as e to the power i, pi over 3. And you got to be careful. You don't have to have the same integer. It could be a different integer that gives you different branches. So they have to be independent of each other because these are different numbers. So I'm going to use 2k pi for that. Make sense? Now, the rest of the work is basically taking this first number, raising it to the power x, and then setting it equal to the second number, and then go from there. So let's go ahead and do the second part. We have now e to the power i times pi over, I think the first one was pi over 6, right? That was 30 degrees. 
plus 2n pi. And notice that this is our first number, so we're going to raise it to the power x. And that should equal our second number, e to the power i times pi over 3. Notice that I'm copying off of here, plus 2k pi. And that would be the 60 degrees, because remember, this time our tangent is root 3. And in the first quadrant, therefore, the angle is 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. Obviously, working in degrees is uh, a lot of times easier, but we should express our work in radians. That's more standard. Cool, cool. What am I going to do next? Just multiply the exponents. You're going to get e to the power i x times pi over 6 plus 2n pi, which is something that I can simplify later. And that equals e to the power i times pi over 3 plus 2k pi. 2k just represents an even number, so we're adding mul even multiples of pi or multiples of 2 pi. Integer multiples of 2 pi, because 2 pi is a full rotation, it's going to bring you to the exact same point. Make sense? Okay. So, now, notice that we can raise both sides to the power 1 over i, which is going to cancel out the i from both sides. And that's pretty much it. If you L and both sides, you just or look at the equality of the numbers and the equality of the bases. They both have the same base. So the exponents are equal. Okay, great. That's nice. So we get x times pi over 6 plus 2n pi. And that's equal to pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Later on, I'm going to simplify this and show you the answer in the simplest form. That's why I'm not really worried about it, this right now. Okay? So this part is the easiest. We all have to, we basically divide both sides by pi over 6 plus 2n pi to get x by itself. So x equals pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Again, k and n are integers. I don't know if I said that before, but that's what they are. And we get the answer. You could leave it like this, but, you know, a lot of times it's better if you simplify the answer. And when you simplify the answer, you're going to see something very different looking. So you'll be surprised, I think. Let's get it done. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a common denominator. And this might be helpful, multiplying the top and the bottom by 6. Let's go ahead and do it, because it looks like 6 is going to eliminate all the fractions. And if you do that, x is going to become, when I distribute the 6, it's going to be 2 pi plus 2k pi divided by pi plus 12 n pi. Okay, great. Almost done. Let's go ahead and factor out a pi here. Actually, I can take out a 2 pi, but I don't think that's going to be super duper helpful. So let's leave. Uh, I hope I didn't mess up anything. Oh, yes, this is supposed to be a 12k pi. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm like, what is going on? This shouldn't be a 2k. So now, uh, if we go ahead and take out a pi, I think it's better to take out a pi. And then we're going to get uh, 2 plus 12k divided by pi times 1 plus 12n. Okay, I'm going to write it in a nicer form in a little bit. The pi cancels out as well, leaving us with something very, very interesting. Let's go ahead and write it like this. 12k plus 2 divided by 12n plus 1. Okay? All right, so pi over 6. Let's see. let's make sure we, we got it. Uh, we made it right. Okay, I'm just checking real quick. I think it's all good. Okay. So this is going to give us the following. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Right? What is this going to give me? Well, k and n are integers. So if you replace k and n with something, you're going to get some values. Okay, great. So what does that look like? For example, if k is equal to 0 and n is equal to 0, then you're going to get x equals 2. Great. What does that give you? If you square this number... then you should be getting this number. And you can always check, just square it, and you'll see. And this is also verified by Euler because this is going to be uh, cosine 30 and or 30 degree angle, and this is going to be a 60 degree angle. But it's also it also means that you can use other values, such as, for example, if uh, k is equal to 1, then x is going to be 14 over, and let's say n is equal to 1 as well, 14 over 13 is also going to work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. 
Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.